We are pleased and honored to be joined here at the Sierra Week Conference by the President of the Republic of Colombia, Ivan Duque. President Duque, thank you very much for spending some time with us here on CNBC. Thank you so much, Brian. It's a great honor for me to be in your show. It's an incredibly important time. Obviously, things have changed. Uh, three weeks ago, my questions probably would have been very different. Uh, I want to get to your plan in Colombia for energy transition and balance, but I want to begin with this. There are some uh, reports that the U.S. is in Caracas uh, negotiating potentially with the Maduro regime about increasing oil production. There's some conversation that Colombia may be involved in either uh, the, the negotiations themselves or at least the brokering of those negotiations. Is there anything that you can tell us? I think this is a, this is a process that has been managed directly by the United States uh, with, uh, with Venezuela. But I just say something, Brian. Maduro is a dictator. He's a world criminal. He has created the biggest humanitarian crisis ever in Latin America. Any solution about the future of Venezuela has to pass by the true exercise of democracy. And that means there has to be a real election taking place. And Maduro cannot be there because he doesn't guarantee transparency in democracy in Venezuela. And besides that, he has been providing safe haven to Colombian terrorists in the Venezuelan soil. So I think any, any search for getting Venezuela to support the current uh, energy crisis that we're suffering because of what happened in Ukraine and Russia cannot be a permission for him to remain in office. And we've talked a lot about Ukraine and Russia, as we should. The world has gone insane, or at least Putin certainly has. But you've been dealing with a humanitarian crisis for years because of, to your point, Maduro's uh, illicit regime, I'll say it, uh, poverty. You've got hundreds of thousands, about millions of Venezuelans have already come to your nation or are hoping to get into your nation just to find food. Uh, what is the proper balance for you of making sure the Venezuelan economy can come back up, but also not propping up the Maduro regime? Every single day Maduro remains in office is making the humanitarian crisis worse, Brian. We have approximately 1.8 million Venezuelans in Colombian soil, and we have granted them with a temporary protection status for 10 years. Why? Because we needed them to get visible, to access the healthcare system, to find a job, to get opportunities. And it was not easy because we have taken a lot of this fiscal pressure, but it was the right thing to do. It was the morally right thing to do. So we're allowing them to become visible and engage in the economic apparatus. Nevertheless, can that be sustained forever? The response is no. If Maduro remains in office, this is gonna be a lasting tragedy. You are meeting with President Biden in Washington, D.C. on Thursday. Will that be your message to him? And where will energy and oil and gas, you produce about a million barrels a day, you're adding renewables, what will be the conversation, the balance between Venezuela, humanitarianism, and also energy right now with the president? I think there are many topics that are very important. The, the, the one that I think it's, it's the umbrella is that this year we're celebrating 200 years of bilateral relationships between the U.S. and Colombia. And that relationship has been bipartisan, bicameral, based on principles. So we're going to talk about investment, we're going to talk about trade, we're going to talk about energy transition, but definitely we're also going to talk about how do we continue fighting transnational crime, how do we keep on defending democracy in the Americas, what solutions can be also identified for the situation that, we, that we're suffering in the hemisphere because of this humanitarian crisis that has uh, left uh, almost six million Venezuelans spread all over the world. And also, what shall be our humanitarian response mm -hmm. and the multilateral response to this uh, insane attack on Ukraine? So those subjects will be in the table. And the most important thing, Brian, that I have to say, the concept of B3W, Build Back Better World, that was launched by the U.S. administration today is more important than ever and it has to be accelerated because I think the American people have realized that they can no longer rely solely on, on uh, products that come from Far East. We need to make Latin America a closer ally and a closer market to the U.S. in order to ensure U.S. security as well. You're, you're undergoing a pretty bold transition by adding renewables of 500 plus thousand homes at the end of your plan will be powered by renewables, but as you build that out, what have you learned from, and I'll say this, the failures of the UK and Europe to properly, we're learning the risk of being imbalanced in your energy supply mix, which leaves you too reliant on wind or Russian gas. 
as you look at the balance for Colombia, what is the right balance? Brian, for me, the three enemies of economic liberties are post-truth, populism, and polarization. And when it comes to energy, many people have tried to polarize the debate. Many people have tried to, to say that oil is the enemy, that there cannot be a balance between non-conventional renewables and the hydrocarbon uh, sector. Well, that's, that's false. And I think Colombia can clearly demonstrate that we are a country that has increased production in oil and gas, that has expanded reserves, but has also become the leader of the energy transition in Latin America. And in fact, our national oil company has become the largest auto generator with non-conventional renewables. So I think there has to be a balance. And sometimes I call this the Canadian approach, that you can be a leader in the hydrocarbon sector, mm -hmm. but you can also be a leader in the energy transition with non-conventional renewables, that you can, can keep on expanding the industry, but also you can become a leader in conservation. And I assume that's one of the reasons that you're here at the Zero Week Conference in Houston, but it's a real pleasure to have you here and speaking on this important topic. Uh, President Duque, thank you very much for spending some time with CNBC. Thank Thank you so much, Brian. It has been a great honor. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Wow, big thanks to Brian Sullivan for that conversation, an important one. Great timing. Be sure to catch Brian's complete wrap-up from Sarah Week on the CNBC special, The Oil Shock, as he talks with the CEOs of Occidental Petroleum, Pioneer Natural Resources, and Williams Company. That's tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern, only on CNBC.